everyone. So when I last left you, we did the morph ball. And as I promised, today I'm going to show you how to fire your bullets. I have no idea what that was about, but whatever. As well as learning how to aim. So I'm going to teach you how to do at least six directions. I don't know what the hell that's all about. I'll have to check it out later. But that is what we're going to do today. So if you're ready, let's begin. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is actually create the bullet itself. So create a new scene, scene 2D, and then in that no 2D, we want to change the type to area 2D. So, and we're going to name that as bullets. If I can spell, Jesus Christ, bullets. All right, and then we're going to add an animated sprite sheet. Actually, you know what, we can just probably just add a, you know, and then I gotta edit out that swear because YouTube. And the next thing we're gonna have to do is a collision. Okay, so what's happening here, or what we're gonna do here, is we're gonna create an area 2D that has a sprite, and then whenever this area 2D collides with something, something's gonna happen. So the first thing we want to do is actually add our sprite sheet again. I have some sprites that I had made previously before recording. If you want them, you can find it in my GitHub. I will have that link down below. And if we want to create this here, or you can just create your own, whichever, whichever works for you. Doesn't really matter. Just hoping I don't get sued by Nintendo. <laughs> so we're gonna go close, and as you can see here, we have our sprite and we have our little collision shape, but we want to make sure that it matches or at least close to the size of our bullet. So then after that, we're going to save it. Save it to bullet or bullets. And then once that's saved, we're going to go into our script. We're going to go into the player script. And the thing I want to do is I want to be able to call this or I, I, I want to I want the player to be able to call this whenever they want. So what we're gonna do is create an on ready variable. And we're gonna call this load in bullets. And then we're gonna do preload. And then it's gonna ask us for a path. And the path that we wanna give it is the bullets. So if we can just find that in our scenes here, you can see it says bullets. And all you have to do is drag and drop it right there. Boom, done. And what this is gonna allow us to do is anytime we call the load in bullets, we are gonna have access to this scene that we just created. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Now earlier in the tutorial, I created a method called fire weapon. We haven't used it until now. So let's get started and using that. First thing I wanna do is create a copy of the the bullet loading or the scene that we're going to be loading in. So I'm just going to call this get bullets, and that's going to be equal to load in bullets dot instantiate. If I can spell, okay, there we go. And then after that, all we're going to do is add child, and all this is going to do get bullets, and all this is going to do is it's going to add. Uh, a bullet to the scene when we hit the fire button. That's all it's gonna do. Don't worry, we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you how to manipulate the directions here in a moment. So I wanna go all the way back up to my player movement. And I wanna create a brand new method, or not method, um, a, a brand new call. If input dot is action just pressed fire weapon. Okay, give me one second here. Um, if you want to create your own custom button, which is what I did here, just go to Project Settings, go to Input, and then here where it says Add New Action, just type in something, uh, I don't know, we'll call it the duh, there, and then you'll hit this little button here, and then it says Listening for Input, you can press whatever you want. So in this case, I put M, and now whenever I press the, uh, well, whenever I, I uh, Ask for an input. If not, just here's this one. Now, whenever I ask for an input, it will appear. 
Okay, but I don't want duh, I want fire weapon. And then we're gonna call fire weapon. Okay, now if I did this correctly, and I'm pretty confident I did because I screwed up earlier, when I press the fire button, I should have a bullet. Beautiful. I don't want to keep pressing the button because um, what's it's going to keep adding it to the scene. Um, so we don't want that. All right, so now that that's done, we're going to go back to our bullet scene and we're going to add a script. And in this script, you can just leave it as bullets or whatever it is you named your thing. And in this script, we are going to um, use a we're gonna write our code for our manipulation. So the things that I want for this thing to happen. So now we're gonna create a couple of functions here. The ready function, our favorite pass, and with physics here. So I want the bullet to die once it reaches a hundred. So this is gonna be a timer. So once this thing is called, it's gonna instantly start counting down. And then if bullet life is greater than or equal to 100 we're going to queue free and all that's going to do is um, once this this threshold is hit it's going to destroy the bullet and you should be able to see that right now actually so if I go here and I'm just going to press the button once it should disappear out the time as you can see it disappeared so that's going to be good. So if we ever miss or whatever, uh, and it flies off the screen, it it, ha well, it has a set lifespan, so it doesn't stay into our memory and bog us down. All right, so now that that's done, the thing we're going to need now is our bullet movement. And we want the direction that it's going to go in and how fast it's going to go. So what we're going to have bullet movement. So this is the direction that it's going to be going in. So in this case, we want it to go in the x direction. And we want that to be equal to the bullet's speed. And this is just um, how fast the bullet's going to be going, obviously. And we want that to be times by delta, because if there's ever any problems with our frame rate, if it goes, if it goes super fast or if it goes super slow, we are not um, the speed of the bullet doesn't change. And then finally, we want the direction. And this is if it's going to be going left or right. Remember, um, we're going to change this bullet direction to either be a negative or a positive number. And depending on that, we'll go either left or right. And then after that, we want to, this is how we're going to get the bullet to move. Because we are in an area 2D, we actually have a nice nifty little function called translate. And this thing is what's going to propel our bullet. So what it's looking for right now is a direction. So what we want is a bullet movement. I was about to do direction. Dot normalized. This is to make sure that if it's ever in an angle, it doesn't go super fast, which we are definitely going to be using. Uh, or we're definitely going to be doing it into an angle. And then we want to times that by bullet speed. Probably not speaking too fast. Anyway, so all this is doing is it's it's looking for the, uh, the bullet's movement, which direction it's going in, and then it wants to know how fast it's going. So that's why we did it like that. And if I do this now, I don't know... I think it should fire. It should fire in a direction. I don't know what direction it's going to be. Okay, it's going to be firing in the right direction. Okay, that makes sense because I'm looking at it right now. Bullet direction is equal to one, so yeah. And as you can see here, we have, do have a little bit of a problem. It's coming out of a groin. <laughs> so don't worry, we're going to fix that as well. Now, one thing I want to do is if the bullet ever hits anything, I want it to disappear. So make sure you click on the bullets here and then go into your, where it says inspector, and hit node. Is it node? Do I have to be in the 2D space? Oh yeah, okay. Okay, well go back to your 2D scene and then, <laughs> and then press on bullet. After that, go to your node, and then we're gonna wanna do body enter and hit connect. It's gonna ask you where you wanna connect it to. It only can connect to things that have a script on it, just something to note. 
in this particular case, um, our bullets area has a um, has a script. So we're gonna add to that, and then what I want to do is say this: if anything ever enters the body, we want to queue it free. Whoops! If I can spell Jesus Christ, English is my first language. <laughs> So now with that being done, if I'm correct, yes, okay, beautiful. Now as you can see here, it's not going anywhere anymore, and that's because it's touching um, Samus's body. So it's dying immediately when it's summoned. And the way we fix that is actually pretty simple. So what we're gonna do is say if body dot name whoops is equal to player. To Q free and uh, Q free, but we don't want it to do that. We want it to be if it's not a player, then Q free. And now, as you can see, now it fires again just as it should and doesn't go past the walls anymore, as you can see. Right. I do see that there's a bit of a problem. Um, I'm not sure if you saw it, but we're, we're gonna fix that as well. All right, now that that's done we are going to start doing directions. So what I want to do now is I want to create a new function or method, or whatever the hell it's called, and I'm going to call this function check direction. And then I want it to have a parameter in it, and I don't know why I'm in the wrong script here, but you know, reasons, check direction, and then I want this thing here to look for the direction that it's currently going in. We'll give it a parameter called dir, when all that is short for, for is direction. And then we want the bullet direction to be influenced by this direction. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna call this direction here, and then we're gonna give it a parameter. That parameter is gonna be either one or negative one. And then that is going to um, change our bullet's direction. And as you remember down here, we have a bullet direction. So if this is a negative, it's gonna go left, and if it's a positive, it's gonna go right. So now that that's done, what we want to do is go back over here to where our fire weapon is, whee, all the way down, and we're gonna say this. If current, whoops, if I can freaking spell direction is equal to left, we want to, yeah, okay. We want the get bullets. Now, what's actually cool about this is because we made a copy of the the bullets, the bullet script, we actually have access to all of the functions and methods and variables that were in there. So, if I press this dot here and I press check direction, this function will actually be called. Now I need it to call. Um, I need to call a direction either um, left or right. So I'm just going to do negative one for now. And now we're not going to leave it like that, but it should, in theory, work now. So if we go this way, fires that way, and we go this way, we fire that way. Beautiful. You know what, actually that kind of worked out a lot better than I thought it was gonna, but I don't want that. I want it to be stored in a variable. So let's go all the way up. Whee! And we're gonna, gonna create ourselves a brand new variable. And I think I called this one bullet direction, but I don't remember. Yes, I did. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. And we'll call variable bullet direction. And that's going to be equal to vector 2. And now what I can do is go all the way back down here. And I'm going to change this to bullet direction. Direction dot x. And we want this one to also be bullet direction 
dot x. All right. And now what I want to do is look for the uh, check direction here. I see. Okay, so let's create a, another method then. Function check bullet direction. If current direction is equal to left, well, the direction at x is equal to negative 1. Whoops. And then we're going to take the same thing. Again, I know it doesn't seem like uh, this makes sense because the 1 and the negative 1 may uh, work just fine, but like I said, there is a reason I'm doing it, and you're going to see it a little bit later. Check bullet direction. Okay. So now, with that being said and done, beautiful. Now, as you saw there, um, when I was idle, I was able to fire. So I definitely don't want to do that. Um, and current direction is not equal to idle. And now that should solve that little issue. Whoops, I'm an idiot. Let me try that again. This time, you know, not pressing anything. Okay, beautiful. I'm not firing any bullets. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to add... What are we going to add, actually? All right, so let's go back to our player 2D, or our player scene. And what I want to do... is I want to add a marker here. So let's make sure that the player is selected and add a new node and we're gonna call this a marker 2D. And what this marker is going to do or be is gonna be where our bullets are gonna be coming out of. So bullet exit position. And what I need to do is go to Samus and we're gonna change her We need, oh, that's correct. We don't have an aim. That's okay. We'll do that in just a second. So we'll do idle left. And we're gonna add this right here. And again, all I really want is the, um, the positions of this because when she turns and changes her position, um, this is where it's going to, where the bullets are gonna be coming out of. So with that being said, we're going to go back to our check directions or check our bullet directions right here. And actually, we need to get that position. If we have that, we can actually get the position, huh? Oh, 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 I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. It needs to be an on ready variable. Okay, my mistake. My mistake. Such a demanding diva. Okay. So now that's done, we're going to go back to check current bullet position. And if we're facing left, all we want to do is do bullet marker dot position is equal to these positions right here. So we want a vector 2, and we want a negative 12, and we want a negative 7. And we're going to move this one right over here. Oops. Control C. Control V. And we can get rid of this. Okay. Now that's done. We want those bullets to come out of those markers. Or out of that marker. So what I'm going to do now is say get bullets dot position. 
is going to be equal to bullet marker dot global. Whoa, 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 whoa. Global position. Okay. And if I did this correctly, it should now fire out of our gun. Uh oh. It is not firing out of our gun. Oh, I think I know what the problem is. Because we added it to this, we need to get the parent now. And now it should work. Okay. <laughs> It does work, but it doesn't. And that is because, for whatever reason, it's just staying in, the, in its spot. But you can see now from at least the right side, closer, from the right side, she's now firing from her actual cannon versus her crotch. All right, let me find out what the issue is here, why it's not um, flipping. Oh, it shouldn't be e is equal, that's, that's, That's a comparison. We don't want to compare. There we go. That's better. Okay. Now we do have one problem though, and that is that we can still fire in the morph ball. So what we want to do is add another conditional to that. Player movement. And we're just gonna go down to where it's here and we're just gonna add and not in morph ball. And that should end that little problem right there. What the hell? Morph ball is not declared. I probably spelled, misspelled it, but that's okay. Oh, it's morph ball. Ha! Yeah, that could be an issue. And now, we can no longer fire when we're in the morph ball. Good. Beautiful. And because we added a parent, it no longer, the bullets no longer follow our direction. I'm not sure if you noticed that um, last time, but if you did, good on you. All right, so the next thing I need to do is drink some damn water. <clears throat> and start working on the aims. So the first thing we want to do is actually add the aiming animation. I'm probably just going to skip this part. Okay, so I just quickly added these animations here. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, again, they'll be on my GitHub. Uh, all right. So what we want to do now is add those animations in when we are aiming up or if we're aiming down. So what I'm going to do now is add a new method. Doesn't matter where you add it, honestly. And we're gonna do function check current aim. All right, so I'm gonna add some booleans here. And those booleans are gonna be variable is aiming up. We go for false, and then we want variable is aiming down. That's also going to be equal to false. And all this is going to do is it's just going to check if we're aiming, uh, if we're aiming up or if we're aiming down. So we're going to. All right. So this is future me. I'm just going to do a little edit here. Um, I don't know what the hell I was thinking but I made it way more complicated than I needed to. So let's make a function called ch And I'm gonna just add this right here. Whoops, let's get rid of all this crap here. Okay, so all we wanna do is add an input. Let's make sure that these variables match what we had before. Don't worry, I'm gonna explain this here in just a minute. Okay, so all we did was we create these variables up and down. Um, this is just going to check if we're aiming up or if we're aiming down. And if we're not, uh, if we ever release those buttons, um, then we're not aiming clearly. So we have to reset them. 
that's that's all you need to do. So just put an input and make sure you, it's um, is action pressed, not is action just pressed. If it's just pressed, it's only going to look for it once. But if you do it um, like this, then it's going to be looking if you're holding it. All right, and then the next thing that I want to do is we're going to add that animation, the aim animation that I had here. So give me one second here. I'm just going to copy and paste the aiming animations that I had. Again, just to make things super simple, Control C. And we're just going to add these right here, Control V. Okay. And again, we're going to have to do here. Okay, anything that has this currently, yeah. Okay, it's going to be. Okay. So here, all I'm doing is I'm adding an aim animation, so which I've really got to stop doing that. Aim animations. Um, all it's looking for is the current direction. If we're currently facing left and we are and um, is aiming down is true and we're not in the morph ball, um, then we're going to play aim down L and then the rest are self-explanatory as well. If you're doing the right, it's going to do it right. If you're, if you're at the left and you're aiming up, you're going to aim up to the left and aim up and to the right. So that is just a post edit there. So if you, you're going to have to call these now, by the way. So yeah, just do those instead. Yeah, I'm gonna freeze frame this for you. Feel free to copy that down. And then the other thing here is check your current aim. So feel free to copy this down also. All right, now back to past me. <laughs> so now that we have these things in here, we can actually start creating another method inside the bullet. And the bullet is gonna be looking for those methods that we just created or those booleans that we just created. So, with that being said, uh, we're gonna create those right now. Function is currently aiming this is true whoops uh, oh, okay I didn't add that in here yet whoops okay so we need to add those as well here so variable um, aiming Aiming up is false. Variable aiming down also equals false here. Okay. Okay, is aiming up. And then what we want to happen is aiming up equals. is true and then we want to do the exact same thing but this time we want it for the down so what we're going to do is we're going to call these methods in the other script and we're going to pass in and we're going to pass in um, either a, a we're going to pass in a boolean and depending if it's true or false, it's going to allow us to either aim up or down in that direction. So now that we have, so now what we need to do is create another method. And this one is going to be called get, whoops, function get aim direction. And we're going to need to get the delta because we're going to call this in the physics process. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this here just because just it's faster. 
If aiming up and bullet direction is equal to negative one, we want the bullet um, uh, movement to change to the current direction, and then we're going to do the exact same thing again, but this time, control V. Okay. I don't know. All these these two things are doing is is looking um, if we're aiming up and we're either facing left or right, it's going to change the the trajectory of the bullet to go up in the up direction, whether whether it be up left or up right. And then we want to do the exact same thing again, but this time we're going to do it for aiming down. So I'm just going to grab this stuff here, and that's doing the exact opposite. So this year. Checking if we are aiming up, and this down here is checking if we are aiming. Jesus Christ, aiming down. Okay, and now that that's done, we can actually use this to change the direction of our bullet. So I forgot to call it in the physics process down here. So it should be. See here is aim. There it is. Get aim, and that should actually be right here. So get aim direction, and we need the delta. Okay, that's where I screwed up on. And now we're going to go back to the player script, and we're going to go all the way back down to um, to the fire weapon, and we are going to add those two parameters in here. Now, if you remember correctly. I told you that we can actually call methods from we can call methods from that script because we have we have access to it. So we're going to do that again. In this case, we're going to do get bullet dot. Okay, what was the name of those things? Is currently aiming. Control C. Currently aiming up, and then we're gonna ch we're gonna call or we're gonna add the parameter of I believe we had aim up or aim down. Give me a second here. Is aiming down? Yes. In this particular case, we're gonna do is aiming up, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing again. But this time, what we're gonna do is aiming down. Now, if we press this, and we go up, it should fire in that direction, and it does not. Yay! Okay. We obviously fucked up somewhere. Alright, All right. I figured it out. I figured it out. I made a dummy. So, we need this to be down. Um, when I copied it over, I forgot to do that. So now, when we play this, we should be able to fire in those directions. Now, as you can see, it doesn't quite aim up properly, and that is because we need, whoops, we need to change that, um, the marker. So it's, well, that one, that one fires nicely. <laughs> so, we're gonna fix that right now. So those markers are gonna dictate, um, where our bullets are going to go. So, I'm going to look for current. What did I have this at? Check bullet direction right here. So, what we're going to do is I already have these um I already have these written down, so I'm not going to waste any more time because this video is already incredibly long. So, I'm just going to copy and paste these down here. Okay, and of course, so all what's happening here is this. I'm taking this position, this, this marker here, and I'm just lining it up with 
with her gun right here and then it's all it's doing is it's giving me um it's giving me um a, it's giving me coordinates and those coordinates are exactly what i'm using here so just like before when i was doing when i was lining this up with the uh the left and the right earlier in the video that's all i was doing so i'm gonna just change this back to her idle stand like so and with that she should now shoot in her proper directions so if i hit up you can see that now obviously it's not perfect um because she <laughs> she she slides but i am actually going to leave that as homework for you so yeah, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is an inventory system. So yeah. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll get to them. All right guys, goodbye for now, but not for long.